So I just made this really cool interior that is probably my most photorealistic render and it's really quite a simple scene. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to make it and how I textured it procedurally to look as close as I could to the scene from Iron Man 2 where Black Widow and Lucky enter that building and Black Widow beats up all the guys. So let's get started. Here's my empty scene without the default cube, of course. Let's start with the floor panel. So Shift A, make a plane. I'm gonna press S4 to size it up four times larger than it was. And we're going to use the array modifier to make some copies of this. And I, for some reason, want it to go along the Y axis. Let's make, uh, I don't know, six copies of that. Okay, now we're gonna make our wall panel. Shift A, make another plane, S4. R, Y, 90 to rotate it all along the Y axis, 90 degrees. Let's turn on our grid, which is this magnet button right here. You can also press shift tab to turn it on and off. And let's go into the options of the snap to and turn on absolute grid snap. Okay, now we're gonna move this over, snap, 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 and snap, 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 snap. I don't know why I'm saying that, but it's just, it's fun. And uh, let's also go into edit mode with tab SY 1.5 to make it 1.5 times larger along this uh, axis. And now let's get to adding these black pieces to the wall. I'm gonna go into edit mode, control R to make a loop cut. And I'm going to move it up to right about here. It's gonna be like our, this is gonna be right above the doorway, I think. And we're gonna make another one, control R, and then hit the plus sign on your number pad to add another loop cut. Press enter and enter again, because you don't want to slide them around. And now I want to move these out evenly to either side of this wall. So I'm going to use my transform pivot and put it to median S, Y to scale them both along the Y. Let's say right about there. There's also going to be a black piece of wood trimming along this line. So if you select these edges in edge select mode and press control B, you're adding a bevel, but it's flat. So we basically I've uh, kind of done a loop cut sort of trick. All right, want another uh, piece up here on top, so control R and just slide it up to, I think right about there and enter. Now we're gonna extrude these thin pieces. So instead of selecting every little square, we're actually gonna select the opposite and then control I, and there we go, save some time. Now I'm gonna extrude this out just a little bit. So I'm actually gonna turn off my snap, press E, hold shift, and out just a tiny bit, there we go, cool. Now I did look up online, the measurements for a standard office door is on average about 36 inches by 80 inches. So, so I'm gonna do a quick and easy trick to get the exact dimensions. So shift A, make a plane, right? Now I'm gonna go to the object properties of this plane down here, and I'm just gonna use a scaling and pretend that they're inches. So X is 36, Y is 80. All right, now we have a ginormous door. It's okay, we can scale it down and it'll still stay in proportion, okay? So R, Y, let's rotate it, R, X, 90, there we go. So move it up to where it's just above the uh, floor, so right there, okay? And let's move it right here. Also, here's another trick. If you go into object mode and then turn on random, we get random colors for each piece, which just helps us kind of differentiate what's what. Okay, so here's our door, it's a little too tall, so I'm gonna keep scaling it down right about there, I think. I wanna get it, I wanna get it to where it's right underneath this ridge, but also right above the door, right above the floor. So scaling up a little bit more. There we go, I'm gonna say I'm happy with that. So we're gonna place this right in the middle of this wall piece, so turn back on our snap. We're gonna slide it over, it looks like it's in the middle. Let's see if I'm right, I'm gonna press three. Yeah, that's centered. Okay, so that's our door. Now we need to cut out a hole so that we can add trimming on either side. So, so select our wall piece, tab into edit mode, control R to add another loop cut, enter, enter. Let's grab this face, it's right behind the door right here. And let's press control R to bevel it and get it just a little bit thinner than the doorway. There we go. Actually, we need to be a little bit wider than the door because we're gonna bevel these as well. There, select those two edges, control R to bevel these together. See what I'm talking about? We need to be around uh, around there. We want to try to make these wood panel pieces. We want all these wood trimming pieces to be the same width, ideally, so it looks consistent. And we're gonna extrude these out as well, but we need to turn off the snap. So, so shift tab, E to extrude, 
I'm holding shift to make it more, you know, subtle. There we go. I'm good with that. Oh, we need a, we need a, a, a baseboard or whatever it's called, the, the floor trimming. So um, I'm back into edit mode, control R for loop cut. Let's move this down right about there. All right, now once you have this loop cut made, let's grab this face and this face, E to extrude, hold shift, move it out to where you like it, go to edge mode, grab this top edge, and I'm going to do a little bevel, like a normal actual bevel. <laughs> there we go. Looks a little bit more realistic down there. Awesome. All right, let's finish making this door real quick, and then we can start duplicating this and making all the wall sections. And uh, then once we're done with the modeling, we can do the fun part, which is the texturing. So I'm going to uh, push this door back into the door frame a little bit. And that means we need to make this floor piece a little bit wider. See how it's not quite reaching to where the door is. So S, so S, X, and there, that's fine. It's all going to be covered up by the door, so or the, by the wall. So it doesn't really matter how wide it is because the length is staying the same. Okay, now I do need to cut a hole in this wall. So tab in edit mode, face, grab those faces and delete faces. There we go. Now we have our actual door piece here. All right, now we want to extrude this back to actually make a little bit of a door frame. So hold alt and select this backmost edge, which is the one facing, you know, backwards into the room, right? We're not going to make a room, don't worry. So E, and this is going, you know, everywhere. So we need to tell what axis, which is X. There we go. It grabbed these outer edges too. Doesn't really matter. They're not going to be visible. We just wanted some, some of this, you know, thickness behind the door right there. All right, so we got our door. And I'm going to cheat and scale it upwards a little bit on the z-axis. There we go. Okay, let's make our door knob. So over here, right around the middle, I'm just going to click. It's going to put our 3D cursor right there on the actual surface of the face. If you ever need to put an object on top of an object, just click with your 3D cursor, shift A, and add it. And bada boom, it's right there, or the origin is right where you click. So uh, the middle point is right around there. Shift A, add a cube. Size it down, size it up, SZ, maybe there. Push it back a little bit. Press period to zoom into your selected object. And I'm actually going to do something I don't do much of, which is subdivision modeling. I don't do this a lot. Uh, so pardon me if my technique is terrible, because I'm sure it is. I'm just adding some, con some loop cuts here because I want to control the roundness of this object. Grab these two sides, shrink it in. If you add additional loop cuts, it basically controls how round or not round your object is. There we go. Cool, and let's add some more subdivisions to show the shape better. Yeah, I know, I'm not great at subdivision modeling. <laughs> Don't judge me. I like to stick to my hard surface edges. None of this organic crap. All right, W, Shade Smooth. Now let's click right in the middle. Now let's click right in the middle uh, of this and we're gonna add a doorknob. So Shift A, Cylinder, and it's uh, 32 vertices, that's good. S to size it down, R, Y, 90. It's a little thick, let's size it down a little bit more. Okay. Scale it out, tab into edit mode, grab this face. Here's a weird little trick I figured out when I made the original. I'm going to I to inset this like that. Then I'm going to grab this face, holding control to make a range there, and then keep coming around to there. E to extrude it out. And let's make this solid. So select this edge, holding control to grab that whole range of edges all you know connected. F to fill it. We're, we're trying to make a flat edge here. This is the best way that I found. So F to fill those. We've got a weird little gap here. Oops. So grab this, 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 and this little trapezoid. F to fill that. Now we got our flat shape for the door handle to come out. Okay. Pretty clever, right? I like to think so. S, Z to scale it down. Extrude out a little bit more because we need a little face to, to extrude this back. Scale this on the Y, and again, and then this little piece curves inwards, right? Remember that little guy? I always wonder what that's for. Grab these hard, grab these edges and just bevel them to make them rounded. Okay, 
shade smooth on that, but that looks pretty nasty. So we need to come over here and turn on that option. Cool. There we go. Looks like a little door, little thing for a key. Awesome. And this has like a little, you know, controller readout thing. So I'm going to click there, shift A, add a cube. I'm not going to make a keypad, don't worry, but you definitely could if you really want to. All right, so that's the keypad. Let's make sure it's about the right scale. It looks a little small. So let's grab these three objects, scale them up right about there. I think that's a little bit more realistic. Okay, looks good. I'm happy with that for now. We're gonna join these all into one, but first I need to apply the subdivision mesh. So I'm probably gonna turn this down by one number. Click on the little down arrow and apply the subdivision modifier. All these don't have modifiers, so I can select them all and press Control J to join them. And I need to turn back on Auto Smooth right there. Okay, got that. And let's join this to the door as well. So Shift Select. Control J and to add some extra little realism, let's make a little nameplate. Shift A, make a cube, size it down, make it a little bit wider and push it into the door like so. Grab this outer face and bevel it. We still have our 3D cursor right here. So let's add a little text object and the text object is very large. So shrink it, shrink it. Rotate it that way, rotate it that way. Center it. Okay, and let's extrude it. So go to your text uh, tab, geometry, and use extrude to make it stick out. Cool. And let's just make it say, oh, I don't know. There we go. Isn't that the little secret Easter egg code that Disney always uses? I think it's A011. A0114, something like that. If you know, my Disney nerds out there know what I'm talking about. All right, so that's the nameplate. Let's convert that to a mesh. Even though every room should have its own code, I know we're not doing that in this tutorial. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so look at this. We got one solid door mesh. Let's uh, join that with this guy, Control J. I love keeping things separate. Trust me, this is hurting me right now to make this all one flat mesh. I love having the control over separate, separate objects. It just makes it easier when you are um, materialing things, but I'm having to get over my little phobia here. So we got one big old mesh of everything, right? And let's go to the modifiers, add modifier array. It's going downwards. We don't want that. We want it to go along the, what? The Y axis. Cool. Let's make maybe four of those. Great. And look at that, that's the end of our little floor strip. So we'll go to our floor and make it seven. This will be the intersection. We're gonna make a T. We're gonna make a T intersection at the end of the hallway. Now we want this to be over here. So Alt D to make a linked duplicate. Move it over here. This is the back side or the inside. So RZ 180. So we made a link duplicate, which is going to be the exact same you know, uh, mesh and everything we do to this one is going to be done to this one. But it's just rotated by 180. So there we go. We've got a hallway, right? Looks good. Let's make an easy ceiling. So really just duplicate the floor. Shift D Z. Do, do, do. Oh, whoa, whoa, one more. Oh, isn't that nice? Everything just lines up so easily because I'm using snap, absolute grid helps, and I'm using basically factors of two and you know four and eight and things like that. Um, uh, by the way, I cover this uh, a little bit more in my um, hallway hard surface modeling video, which is a hit. It has, it's probably my, it is my most popular video, and for for good reasons. It's really it's really easy and fun to follow, and a lot of people have learned a lot from it. So I, I appreciate everyone's feedback. By the way, um, I love you guys commenting on my videos saying. So nice, such nice things encourages me to keep doing what I'm doing. So we're making our T, uh, our T intersection here. Copy the, the floor. Actually, I'm just going to copy the, the ceiling. Shift D Z, move it down there. Oh, I missed, I missed it by a little bit. G Z, there we go. Now let's name things. Right, we got to be diligent. We got to be good organized blenders. So go to your object. Let's do floor one. Over here is going to be floor, what? Two, yeah. 
Ceiling one. Oh, no typos yet. Fingers crossed. Ceiling. Oh, there we go. I, write, I wrote the number three. <laughs> All right, here's wall one. And wall two. Now we're going to copy these guys and put them over here. Um, uh, actually, this... Oh, I messed up already. Look at this. We got to move this back this way. There we go. One more. There. Now let's get this wall and Alt D R Z 90. Cool. I just went to the above view using num numpad seven. Now I'm going to move this with G and just try my best to place it right where it needs to go. That looks good, right? We got the hallway intersection right there. And then let's uh, do this again. Alt D sliding on the X axis, keep moving it over. And we don't need this many duplicates. We can go down to like two. There we go. Yeah, just don't overtax your computer when you don't need it. Cool. And then we need to make this opposite side. So I'm going to grab this long one. Alt D Y, move it over here. R Z 90. And let's go to above view with numpad seven and just snap this into place. Let's see if it all lines up right. If I press numpad one, I'm looking down the hallway, right? Like this. And let's put a door in the middle of this hallway. Maybe that's, I don't know if that's normal or not, but we're going to put a door right there. And that's all nice and centered. We've got an extra copy of this wall, so I'm just going to turn the array down to three. That is all the basic modeling. Now let's add the ceiling lights and some pipes on the ceiling. All right, so the light fixtures are pretty simple. We're just going to make a cube. Let's move it down just to get it in the right area. Center it. Again, I press numpad one to get a, 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 I guess, front view. I don't really know. All right, edit mode. Let's shrink it down. Let's make it thinner. Maybe a little bit thinner. A little bit longer. There you go. That's about, I don't know, five feet long. That looks good. Let's make some loop cuts in the middle. Control R, two, enter. Enter again. Grab these edges, and I'm going to turn off snap. Just move them straight down to give kind of a angled look there. Cool. Control R two. Enter enter. Put your transform pivot to medium point so that we can scale these out together. So S Y right there. Awesome. Make another one in the middle. Control R enter, and then with this still selected, Control B. Oh, look at this. We have too many pieces. We're, we're, I'm just doing the bevel trick to save some time. So there we go. All right. Now we have our individual parts where the lights are actually going to be shining out of. So grab those four faces. Let's press I to inset. All right. Now we're going to extrude these along normals. So extrude along normals. And whoa, in just a little bit. There we go. Now this model is basically uh, symmetrical times two. So it's really one corner and everything else is the same. So there's a really cool add-on that I've been using a lot lately um, called Auto Mirror. It's free. So I'm going to mirror this along two different axes. I'm going to do it first on the X, so Auto Mirror. So look, if I turn this off, it automatically sliced it for me, sliced it right in half, and then select Y and Auto Mirror that. So now I'm really only editing one of these quarters and the modifiers are doing the other work for me. Cool. So I'm really only doing this corner. Everything else is going to copy me. So before I do subdividing to add a grid, I'm going to add some loop cuts to make it evenly subdivided. So control R. I'm going to hit plus a few times until I feel like these are basically making good, good squares. There we go. That feels good to me. So with face selection mode, grab all these squares, right? They're, they're even squares. Because when I do subdivide, now it's going to make smaller squares. That's good enough. I'll just do three three uh, rows right there. All right, with all these squares made, we're going to do a little materialing up front. We're going to fix it later. But first, let's make a new material and call it light box. That's going to be the metal, this whole metal thing up here. And then we're going to make another one called light grid. And we're going to actually click assign. There we go. So this light grid is assigned to all these squares that are selected. Now, with these squares still selected, press I. And you may have to press it a second time to get this, the individual incest. If you only get this, press I a second time, and you'll get the individual little squares. So make them small and uh, confirm by clicking or pressing Enter. 
Now make a third texture called light. This is the actual light emission plane and click assign. Now let's look at what we actually have assigned to these materials. So light grid is the grid around it. Deselect. The light is the squares in between. That's good. And just real quick, let's make this uh, from principled to emission. And uh, we'll fix that later. Okay, so I needed to do that up front because those little squares and stuff can be really tedious, right? All right, let's make these support beams. So grab a square, shift D to duplicate it. Now we have a free floating plane. S to scale it down. E to extrude it upwards. All the way upwards to the ceiling. And there, with this little face still selected, press Shift S and cursor to select it. Now the 3D cursor is right there. Shift A and make a cylinder. Oh, I hate when this happens. Because I have um, the mirror modifier being used times two, it's doing this like clipping thing here. So I'm just gonna undo that, delete the cylinder, turn off clipping, turn off clipping, do it again. Shift A, cylinder, there we go. There's no more clipping. I'm going to shrink this by SZ, so make it a thin little plate. Grab the circle face, Shift D, Enter. And I'm going to make this basically little screws. I'm going to be really, I'm really going for realism here in case you, you missed that. Seven for above view, wireframe. Our 3D cursor is still right in the center. That's great. So we're going to uh, rotate this around the 3D cursor. So it's 3D cursor selected here, Shift D, R90. And then uh, to repeat that, shift R, shift R. And there we go. We just did a little radial array trick. I like it. While we're here, let's also make these materials. So select the circles, press control L to grab the whole um, screw material. Let's call this one screws and click assign. There we go. All right, and there we have our light fixture hanging from the ceiling. Now let's add some pipes because in the original movie scene, I did notice some big industrial pipes along the ceiling and that's a nice little touch to add some realism. Oh, we do need to array this down the hallway and I feel like this is hanging a little bit low. Like someone could hit their head if they're really tall. So let's, let's move that up by going into edit mode, vertex mode, C for the circle select and grab all these vertices over here. Remember, we only have one corner that's real. The other four corners are, are, are mirrored. So C to circle select all these vertices. May have to go into x-ray mode to really grab them all. There we go. And then GZ to move them down. And we're just going to uh, get out of edit mode and move the light up. Until it pokes through the ceiling. Where is the ceiling? Oh, we're on x-ray mode. GZ, there it is. Right there. There we go. That's taller, a little bit more out of the way. Nice. And let's use the array tool, array modifier. So here it is. Wrong direction. Let's collapse these guys. Zero, let's do two. Maybe three. Yeah, that looks a little better. And move it down right about there. Cool. Now I want these lights to be also going down this hallway. So shift or actually alt D, enter R90. So we have a linked copy and I like to have a light right down the middle that's visible at the end of the hallway. So I'm going to do this and add one more. There we go. So when we are when we are looking down the hallway like this, we've got a light there. It just looks cool. But you don't have to do that if you don't like it. OK, uh, let's. Oh, yeah, let's do the pipes. So let's just click up here somewhere. Shift A, add a cylinder, size it down, move it down a little bit. RX 90. So it's flat. See, it's going this way. And if you want to make it long, you can of course scale it along the Y axis. So S Y. And we're going to make it go all the way down the hallway, put it underneath the ceiling. So it's actually in the room. That's a little bit big. So scale it, scale everything down and then scale Y to make it longer. Let's get rid of our ceiling pieces. Just hide it. So select it and press H select, press H. There we go. It's a nice, schematic view, right? All right, so we've got our pipe. We want to have multiple pipes here. So I'm going to uh, move this over. I'm going to do shift D along the X axis. And then to repeat that shift R shift R. So I've got four individual objects, objects here. Let's select them all. 
shift select them, tab into edit mode, and then grab this face on each of them. So we're actually editing multiple separate objects at once, which is really cool. Okay, so seven for above view. Click on the actual corner here, let's try that. And with our spin tool selected, go to your little uh, screwdriver and wrench options here. This is the options for the spin tool. Put it at kind of high, like 32 or 20 or something like that, and use Z. Not these other directions, but Z, because we're on, a, on an above view. So click on the plus to begin spinning, and hold control so it'll snap to exact degrees. Sweet. That is how you make pipes. E to extrude it down the hallway, and there we go. We've got some nice, perfect electricity or water-carrying pipes. Let's add them to the other side, so select them all. Alt, D, Enter. S, X, negative one. So we just scale them along the X, but negative one. So it mirrors them. Okay, let's get them evenly spaced so it looks all nice and uniform. Right about there. Okay, and we need to add some little uh, things to hold these and support them while they hang from the ceiling. And I think they need to be a little bit lower. So move them down together right about there. I'm gonna click on the bottom of this pipe, add a cube. And this is going to be our like support Thing. I don't know even what it's called. Any engineers watching this are probably cringing as I destroy the namings of all these things that they probably make every day. GZ, there. Move this over. We want to leave room for a uh, like a wire metal screw to hold this up. There we go. And I'm going to mirror this as well to save me some time. So left and right to me is X. So auto mirror, look at that. I only have one side, whatever I do over here, it's mirrored on both sides, cool. So I'm gonna click right there in edit mode, make a cylinder. Oh, we got that darn clipping thing again. I need to turn that off. Use clip, I don't like that. Okay, turn off clipping, delete that cylinder. Do it again, shift A cylinder, scale it down big time, and then scale it up big time on the Z. And just move it straight up. There we go. Looks pretty good to me. If you want to make this nice and uh, mechanically accurate, a lot of times these have screw holes on them. So I'm making loop cuts and watch this. I'm going to grab all these individual uh, vertices here, space bar and type in circle. Enter. Now I, I think this might be a um, kit ops trick. I'm not sure, but it makes a circle wherever your vertices is, but they're, for some reason, they're all skewed. And they're not like normal fat, like symmetrical circles. So I'm just gonna scale them up. There we go. And then E to extrude them up right about there. Cool. I'm pretty sure I've seen that on real things before. <laughs> That's my technical way of saying, I think this is right. And make sure your little screw supports are growing above the ceiling line, which they are. And there we go. We are good to start spreading this guy around. So move it over here. Let's do some more arraying. I love these modifiers because they make your life so much easier. So maybe 50, ooh, way more. 100. Do, do, do. Oh, that looks nice. Look at that, ended right at the end of the hallway. We need to uh, duplicate this over to the other side. So Alt D X. Put it right there, and then down the uh, other corridor, so Alt-D, R90. Zoom into that. Space it right there. It may not ever be seen, but you know what? It's there in your heart, right? All right, uh, Alt-D, X, and move this right about there. Cool, now our pipes are realistically suspended above the ceiling. And you can even put some wires and other cool things um, if you want. Uh, don't forget fire extinguishers, right? And the little um, things on the ceiling that, you know, put out fires. I forgot what those are called. I'm having a brain fart right now. It's late. Give me a break. So we're good with the modeling. I think we're done with everything uh, concerning making the actual hallway. Let's do the fun part that you're probably here for is the textures. And the materials in this project are super simple. I promise you, they are procedural, but they're, you're not gonna be making a ginormous node tree, don't worry. So let's split our view into two. So we have a window up here and make it the shader editor right there. All right, let's start with the floor. 
So select the floor, materials tab, new, and name it floor. Be a good blender artist and name your actual materials. All right, let's go into material view. It's very white. <laughs> now with our top view here with the shader editor, I've got my floor material made. I named it too, and I don't see anything. This happens a lot in Blender. So I'm going to press period, and it should bring us to the nodes. You may have to press A and then period. There we go. It centers whatever you have selected. So I just pressed A to select all. All right, so for the settings here, it'll be pretty simple. We're going to turn up specular, turn down roughness to like, I think it was dot one five that I had. And um, that will give us a shiny floor. But we don't want it to be perfectly shiny, right? We want it to have some imperfections. So shift A, make a moose grave texture right there and press shift A, type in mix RGB. And we're basically going to be mixing this roughness value with this procedural noise. So this is dot one five, make this top color from number one, dot one five. And then plug this into roughness. So we have roughness, is color one and color two is going to be our procedural noise, which is going to be imperfections on the floor. That is a key to realism in 3D scenes is not having everything perfect, but having imperfections like scratches and dents and you know soft edges and things like that. If everything is pristine and sharp and clean, the human eye is going to know if something's off and it's not real. So what we're doing here is we're mixing noise with perfection, right? We're adding some noise to it. So let's try. Um, I think I did overlay, the overlay method. So if we have node wrangler add-on enabled, which allows you to preview individual nodes, I'm going to hold control shift and click on moose grave texture. And that's what the noise is doing. And it looks terrible. So let's size it up a little bit, increase our detail, drop our dimension to zero. And that's when things get real crunchy and noisy, right? We can also play with this setting to give more variety. I also like to have a color ramp node to really control um, what this most grave is putting out. So let's clean things up a little bit. There we go. Plug this color ramp into color number two. And I, it shifts that up automatically. Let's unconnect that. All right, so we're looking at a color ramp. Now we, look at this, we can really control. If we increase the blacks, there's more black. And that means the noise is more spread out, which is good. For floor imperfections, you want little scuffs and scratches to be, you know, spaced apart from each other. You can also play with the scale here to do kind of that number. But once you're good with a realistic scale that looks believable, let's go back to normal mode. So control shift, click on this, and we're back to normal viewing mode. You can't really tell unless you get in really close or just go to rendered view, which might not actually work because we don't have any lights in here. There's a tiny bit of light <laughs> from the emission thing that we created earlier up on the light. <laughs> but this emission is so weak. So let's click on our light fixture, go to the light texture, which is the emissions, and make this like 25. It needs to be pretty bright, all right? I do wanna do an early render to see what this is looking like, but I need to set my camera first. So press number one for a front view, control alt zero to make whatever your active camera is match your viewport. So now we have the camera roughly in the right place, but it needs to move back. So G, Z, Z, and move my mouse, G, Z, Z, Cool, and I want it to be right in the middle. So go to your object properties, put X at zero, maybe raise it up a little bit on the Z, and let's make it a little bit wider. So I'll do a 35 millimeter lens, GZZ to move it forwards in the hallway. There we go. Let's render this and see what it's looking like. All right, so I had a really low sample count, so this is super blurry and smudgy because of the denoising, so let's fix that. So that took 45 seconds on my computer, much longer, um, but we do see the imperfections in the areas that the light is reflecting strongest. So down here on the floor. And it's still pretty soft because there's a lot of denoising happening. There's a lot of noise samples happening, but we're gonna press on and make this look nice and polished. I'm seeing some light po poking underneath the doors. That's because I still have a default light source on the outside of this whole structure and it's trying to shine through. So let's get rid of that and uh, continue to improve this. So if you can't find a light, you can actually filter and turn off meshes and it'll show everything else. So here's my light. I'm just going to turn it off from render and off from the visibility in here and then uh, turn back on meshes. There we go. All right, let's make our wood textures for the wall. So with our wall visible, I'm going to go to my materials tab. New material, call it wall. 
And we can do the basic nodes right here because we're not really adding much to the wall. We're gonna turn up specular, turn the roughness down to maybe 0.3. And now we're gonna make the dark wood texture. So plus sign, new material, name it, dark wood. Make the color pretty much black. Turn up specular, turn down roughness to dot two. Let's try that. All right, now we need to apply this to all the trimming pieces. So let's do that trick we did earlier. Let's select everything we don't want. So let's grab this, these panels right here and control I to invert it. Let's apply the dark wood to all of that. We do want the door to be black, but we don't want everything else to be black. So let's uh, use our C circle select to grab the name faceplate and the lock with the door handle, and then press control L to grab the whole selection and deselect the door. All right. Let's make an aluminum texture. Aluminum, not aluminum, mind you, aluminum. Turn up metallic all the way, turn up specular all the way, and roughness down to maybe dot 15, and click assign. Now everything selected is now aluminum. All right, so let's grab a few faces from the fronts and sides of these letters, because they're actually separate. Control L to uh, select the whole thing. Look at that, I didn't grab the inside, because that's a separate set of faces, which is interesting. I like never use text in my stuff. Control L, there we go. Let's make it dark wood and a sign. That looks nice, I like it. And we can go down here, grab our little card reader, make that dark as well. All right, look at this, it's already coming together. The contrast, the lines, the perspective, it all makes this thing really pop in a nice way. Let's grab our pipes, make a pipe texture, just name it pipe. Let's turn up metallic a little bit as if it was metallic, but it got painted over. Turn up specular and roughness down to maybe dot one five again. Oh, that's a little bit much. Dot 25. Cool. Now let's grab the other pipes with shift. And then we're going to grab that last one that does have the material and control L link the materials. There we go. That's an easy way to apply material to a whole bunch of things. And we didn't do the smoothing trick that I normally do. So let's uh, grab all these pipes, W shade smooth, and then we need to turn on auto smooth for each of them individually. There we go, and there we go, cool. All right, let's grab this pipe holder, make it aluminum as well. Oh, we didn't finish making the light textures. So with the light box, let's give it like a little bit of a darker gray, metal all the way up, specular all the way up, and keep the diffuse around the middle. We don't want it to be like a shiny metal, maybe kind of a flat metal, dot three or something like that. And then the light grid, let's make that a darker gray. There we go. Let's add a little bit of imperfection to the dark wood texture. So grab one of the faces, click on dark wood, drag this down, and we're gonna do the same mixing trick that we did earlier. So shift A, mix RGB, and this roughness is set to dot two. So let's make color one, set the value or V to dot two and plug it in. There we go. And we're going to make a uh, noise, actually noise texture here. We're gonna plug it into a color ramp there. So factor to there, color to color two. So we're mixing between color one, which is the roughness value that we want. And then we can mix over to color two, which is um, the noise texture. So let's preview this color ramp, control shift, click, turn up our scale, turn up the roughness. And if you wanna to try to mimic wood, you know, you need to have wood grain. So I'm gonna do a quick cheat that's not exact by any means, but it might get some of the trick done. I'm just scaling this along <laughs> the X axis, which kind of stretches it in a wood grainy kind of way, right? My wood purists are probably cringing as I do this, but it's all right. Okay, let's go back to here. Let's preview this one. So if we mix to color one, it's that much reflection. If we go to color two, it's this kind of reflection where there's it's, it's imperfect. That's good. Let's do multiply. So multiply will add the darkness values of the noise on top of the gray. If you don't like that, you can do the opposite and set it to screen, which will add the white values on top. So white means less reflective, black means more reflective. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do multiply. So that it's actually adding 
pieces that are more reflective. There we go. We want it to be kind of a subtle gray, just a little touch. All right, let's go to the wall texture and do the similar thing. Shift A, mix RGB. Uh, we have a roughness of dot three, so let's do this value at dot three. Plug it into roughness, make a moose grave, plug it into color two. Let's preview this and let's make it a pretty large, um, not too detailed kind of map. We're going to use multiply to add shinier areas. So this, this, you know, light gray is not super reflective, but this will make it unevenly reflective and just a small touch will go a long way. You can, of course, refine this later. So go back to previewing this guy. And I think our dark wood. Oh, yeah, there we, go. We, we need to undo this viewer. This is from um, Node Wrangler. So go back to previewing this guy, which is just showing it how it should be. And there we go. If you want to take your floors to the next level, um, definitely look up smudge, floor, or scratch textures. And you can layer those in on top of this noise. To add some more realistic kind of long, narrow scratches that floors will you know, inevitably accumulate. Um, I am actually going to use one of my own node groups that I've created um, called Scratchy. And I do sell this on my gum road. It comes with four or no, actually five other really cool shaders that are really great for sci-fi and hard surface stuff. It's only five bucks. So definitely go and get that pack of shaders because they are really great and big time savers. But I'm gonna show you real quick what this one can do. So all I need to add is a coordinate to give it some location information. Now, if I preview Scratchy, here's what it's doing. It adds all these cool scratches. You can control the angle, how noisy they are, how stretchy they are. There we go. I'm going to size it up. So we're getting some kind of long, narrow scratches, which is great. And play with these settings so it's a little bit more random. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm gonna layer this on top of what I already made. So I'm using, um, an, I'm gonna use another uh, mix RGB right here. So now we're mixing between my procedural noise and the roughness value, and then I'm adding the scratch. So I want this to be uh, a scratch is basically going to make something clearer or more reflective, which means I want to make the scratches not white, but black. So I'm gonna use an invert node just like that. Now the scratches are black and I want this to be layered on top using multiply mode. So I'm going to preview this guy and there we go. Now I can add on top these dark scratches from my DG scratchy node shader, but you don't have to do that. I'm sure you can find some really good images online, but they will tile and repeat, which is kind of annoying. All right, let's get back to normal view. So control shift click the principled shader. We've added noise and imperfections to all the other stuff, such as the dark wood and the white wall. So here's our old render. Let's go to slot two and render on top of this to see the improvement. All right, and here it is. It's looking pretty darn good. The cool thing about cycles is that the only light source in this scene is actually the, the true light fixtures on the ceiling. It's the emission texture that's emitting light into the room and it's bouncing around, giving us reflections, doing ray tracing and all that. EV will not be able to do this. This will have light on it, but it's only an illusion of light. It'll be bright, but there's no light coming out of it. You have to actually add lights into your scene to light things up. Um, that's one thing I don't like about EV, but you know, it doesn't do ray tracing. So here in Cycles, it's great. However, the texture things that I did to the walls are so subtle and minute that denoising is basically killing the textures that I'm adding. The floor is strong enough to be seen and it looks pretty darn good but the walls and the wood are kind of getting smoothed out to uniformity because of denoising. So if I want to retain those details that my procedural textures are adding, I'm going to need to up my samples to 1000 or maybe even 2000 to really get those, those little details on the wall. So just for fun, let's switch this over to Eevee and I'm going to show you what happens. All right, so here's our cycles render. Let's make a new slot on top and render it. So it's going to go from a 45 second render to a not even a one second render. Look at this, 0.94. <laughs> not even one second to render this. Uh, there's not a lot of samples. It's kind of grainy and there's no real light sources. Looks like a, a flooded, you know, watery room because the reflection off the floor is different. It seems that reflections in EV are a little bit different than in cycles, but I'm not going to take time playing with that because cycles does this scene so beautifully. 
Here's the first one with no textures, and then there's our textured version. Pretty cool, huh? I love seeing it before and after. It just reminds me, hey, all these little things you're doing, they matter. They're important. Thanks so much for watching this, and you guys have a great week.